Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night Through the night So I face a challenging day Before He take me away Me had to be great Success on my mind Good morning Me neighbor, good morning The how everybody be do this wonderful Blessed and beautiful morning to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. It is the 8th day of January in 2024, and outside there's a grey overcast sky with an angry looking sea and some very some reasonably strong wind. If you ask me, it feels like there's a cold front on the horizon. It's not chilly as yet, but the weather conditions certainly have changed from that of over the weekend. It is a beautiful morning still, however, and we give God thanks that we have the opportunity to be able to greet this new day and this new week. We want to say a special prayer for our teachers and students who will be returning to school this morning here in Belize. Mm -hmm. I know in the U.S. many have gone back already. We're going to kick things off this beautiful, beautiful Monday morning with this one entitled, Today I Awake and God is Before Me. Let's have a listen.
actually enjoy that one a great deal. The words of it makes me feel so blessed by it. I especially like that last verse where today I enjoy the Trinity around me, above, before, and behind, the Maker, the Son, the Spirit together that calls me to life and calls me their friend. Beautiful words indeed. Let us continue then getting our words up on screen for today, January the 8th in 2024. Let's see if I could make that happen here in 3, 2, and 1. There we go. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation will reach to the ends of the earth. Words from Isaiah chapter 49. Verse 6. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 35 using versicle 1. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle to Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100 and can be found on page 37 in our Books of Common Prayer. Let us pray. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph for all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God, and it is he who has made us, and we are his people. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever and his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, and things perhaps that might have even been unkind to our very selves. For those times and those moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 1, 2, and 3, and using a previously recorded version of the Psalm leading us this morning is Miss Shalima Young. Let's have a listen. The Psalm appointed for today is as follows. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by the streams of water, bearing fruits in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doom. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the people mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt and the princes plot their plot together 
against the Lord, against his anointing. Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in his discern. Then he speaks to them in wrath. And his rage filled them with terror. I myself have set my king. Uphold my holy hill of Zion. Let me announce and decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. And the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod. And shatter them like, piece of, like pieces of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear. And with trembling bow before him. Lest be angry and you perish. For his wrath is quickly kneeled. Happy are they all who take refuge in him. Lord, how many adversaries I have? How many there are who rise up against me? How many are those who say of me? There is no help for him in his God, but you, O Lord, are a shield about me. You are my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I call aloud upon the Lord. And he answers me from the holy hill. I lie down and go to sleep. I wake up again because the Lord sustains me. I do not fear for the multitudes of the people who set themselves against all around. Rise up, O Lord, set me free, O my God. Surely you will strike all my enemies across the face. You will break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Your blessings be upon your people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever, world without end. Amen. We want to thank Ms. Shalima for leading us in the reading of the Psalms for this morning. Our second canticle for this morning is canticle number 9, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Bible reading for this morning comes from the Gospel according to John, John chapter 4, verses 46 through to 54. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel according to John. John chapter 4, reading verses 46 through to 54. This entire commandment that I command you today, you must diligently observe so that you may live and increase and go in and occupy the land that the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether, you, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth 
of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, for some reason, I get the feeling that that portion of scripture was not from the gospel according to John. And I've been noticing that the program, well, the lectionary that we've been using for our readings has not been working out according to what it's the lectionary has not been flowing according to what I believe should be the order of the lessons. Um, but that portion of scripture there, we're going to make sure we get John chapter 4, verse 46 to 54 up in a little while. Because I believe John chapter 4, verse 46 to 54 is about the healing of a Samaritan. As in the Gospel of John, we would be looking at the healings of Jesus. Um, and it would have been a official after Jesus would have turned water to wine, that an official would have come to him to try to see how he could get healing as well. And let me see here. I should be able to have it up here in a matter of seconds, really. Uh, let me see if I could get that up and running. The thing about technology is that technology allows you to work swiftly these days. Right. Let me see if I have it here. I believe that. So it's Jesus in Cana of Galilee where he would have done the changing of the water into wine that we would have heard last week. And royal officials, of course, would have been around because Jesus' popularity um, would have increased after he had changed this water into wine. And there was a royal official whose son was ill and the son, of course, was in Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went down to beg Jesus to come down and heal his son because his son was ill to the point of death. And then Jesus said to him, yes, unless you see the signs and wonders, you will not believe. And it's interesting because remember, these signs and wonders were the same thing last week that we spoke about, where Jesus told the people who were following behind him, you have come to try to make me king, not because... You believe the signs and wonders, but because you want more bread, because you're greedy. And here he was telling the the Roman official, yeah, or the council official, the nobleman, that it is more signs and wonders that he was looking for. You're, you're not really interested, yes, for the right reason. You are looking to benefit for yourself through the healing of your son. And the official said to Jesus, sir, come down with me before my little boy dies. Yeah. And Jesus didn't go with the man. And this is one of the, the miracles that I like. But Jesus said to him, go, your son will be well. Jesus didn't go with him to touch him or to lay hands. And last week, we heard of Jesus making um, um, a paste out of dust and spit to create mud to put on the eye of somebody. So we know that his touching of somebody is a means through which he can heal. But in this instance, he didn't even go close to the person that he was healing. And it's interesting because even though the, the, the nobleman implored Jesus to come, the man was insistent on what he wants. And let me tell you, parents, hmm, many parents who come to Jesus on behalf of their afflicted children, whether it is illness of body, illness of spirit, illness of mind, many parents who come to Jesus on behalf of their afflicted children, come with great compassion, come with great faith, come with great desire for a change for their child. And this man came, obviously, with passion and an urgency. Yes? And that Jesus would kind of rebuke him, you know? Because Jesus rebuked those who depended upon signs and wonders in order that they would believe. And it, it seems as if though Jesus... Jesus' words was harsh towards this man who wasn't really looking for signs and wonders, it seems, just that he wanted his son healed. Hmm? But Jesus had encountered so many in, in Galilee who were interested only in his miracles as a means of benefit for themselves. Hmm? And yes, signs and wonders could lead a person towards belief in God and can validate the heavenly messenger as well. 
we just celebrated the feast of the epiphany um, and the feast of the baptism of jesus by his cousin john and of course we know that at the baptism of jesus the sign and the wonder that took place was the opening of heaven and the coming down of the dove along with the voice and i am sure that those who had witnessed those things those who had witnessed those things would have had great reason to believe because they would have seen the signs and wonders and israel yes at the time in the old testament would have seen the signs and wonders at mount sinai would have heard the voice of god but guess what not long after they saw the signs and wonders they were down there with aaron worshiping the golden calf and that's the thing that Jesus is trying to avoid. That's the thing that Jesus is trying to avoid. He's saying, not even the signs and wonders that you see keep your heart faithful towards God. So don't come to me looking for signs and wonders because what I need from you is sincerity. What I need from you is not just a desire that you want to see what I can do. I want you to have a complete change of heart. Hmm? And the noble man as if saying to Jesus, you see me, I ain't getting into no quarrel with you. Please, just come down and heal my child before my child dies. I'm not coming to look for signs and wonders is not what the man said. He didn't outrightly say that, but he did not engage with Jesus in an argument or in any type of objection. He stuck to the cause of why he was there. And I think that's a key lesson for us to note. Yeah? Sometimes when we go to Jesus and we ask Jesus in prayer to make a change for us or in the life of someone that we know. Hmm? When we don't see progress as quickly as we would want, what begins to happen? We begin to start to question. We begin to start to want to negotiate. We begin to start to try to back and forth with God. This man didn't do that. He acknowledged Jesus, you're the only one who could heal my child. I ain't getting in no heated conversation with you. You have what I need. You have the authority that I don't have. Please just come and heal my child. No lot of long talking, as we would say. And Jesus must have seen something different in the man's persistence, even after telling him that he was looking for signs and wonders. And so Jesus says to him, go, your son will live. He didn't tell him, your son is going to be healed, which is the healing the man came to look for. But the man's fear in wanting his son healed was because he knew that the ultimate end to his son not being healed was that his son would die. And so Jesus, not bothering about the side effects of this illness, or even what the illness is itself, went straight to the desire that the boy lives. And Jesus said to him, go. Your son will live. Hmm? The nobleman was not discouraged by Jesus' reply in the beginning. The request showed that the nobleman properly understood that Jesus did not tend to discourage him from asking for help. It was help, it was it was a statement to discourage a faith that was seeking only the miraculous. And that's the thing. I think if more of us would stop seeking the miracle and start seeking the miracle worker. We would be more complete in our faith. We would be greater. We would have greater encouragement to continue in the works of Christ. I, I don't think that we should be going around looking for the provisions. We should be seeking after the provider. You understand? I'm hoping that that's making sense. Because that's what I get from this reading. The man wasn't looking for the miracle. He was looking for the miracle worker. Who could make a difference. And that's the thing. That's what we should be. Hmm? He pleaded his case. Yeah. And he didn't come up with any sorry arguments. Huh? And his faith must have been strong enough. That as he begged. Mercy's door and compassion opened for him. Jesus says to him. Go on your way. Your son will live. And that was a true Yes, test to the man's faith. Because the man wanted Jesus to go with him. Jesus didn't go with him. Jesus tell him, you go along by your business. Your son's going to be all right. He's not going to die. And the man had to trust in what Jesus said. 
He didn't get to see a miracle take place. He didn't get to see Jesus lay hands. Jesus didn't give him any special portion to rub the boy with. He had to have faith that the words of Jesus was enough. He was forcing the man yeah, to believe in Jesus' word alone and not an outward demonstration of any miraculous activity. And despite the test, the man took Jesus at his word and departed. He demonstrated true faith in simply taking Jesus at his word. The man believed the words that Jesus spoke to him. And started on his way. Hmm? And even before the man got home. Somebody from his household came and told him. Guess what? Your child is alive. And he asked the person. What hour did his recovery begin? And they said to him. Yesterday at one in the afternoon. The fever left him. And the father calculated. That the hour that they told him. That his son was Becoming healed that his fever left him was the same hour when Jesus said to him, your son will live. Hmm? And he rejoiced. He had left off from Jesus with faith. Hmm? He believed before he saw the evidence himself. He believed and walked towards the healing that Jesus had promised even before he had proof. And when he did get the proof, hmm? the proof of the miracle was plain. When Jesus proclaimed the boy was healed, he was in fact healed. And in a demonstrated way where those who were around him during his sickness could see that right away he was made well. Hmm? According to the man's servant, it happened at a particular hour. At the same hour, the noble man was meeting with Jesus and left. Because it was the faith of the man that God could make a difference. That Jesus could bring that healing even in his physical absence. Hmm? The man didn't go home immediately looking for another doctor. He went home trusting in what Jesus says. And it was that trust and that faith in that very moment that he had it. That brought healing to him some. And he himself believed and his whole house with him the miraculous power of jesus developed greater faith in both the nobleman and his entire household he believed before but now he believed even more his faith was deepened and his personal experience of god's power was what did that and the reading tells us this is the second sign the first sign persuaded his disciples when he changed the water into wine and the second sign persuaded the Jewish nobleman and his household. What's the sign that you are looking for? What's the miracle that you are asking Jesus to perform? And are you looking for a physical miracle omitting all the miracles that are revealed to you on a daily basis in oh so many ways? That you are awake this morning, that you can hear my voice, that you can see images in front of you, these are all miracles. But if we are too busy looking for miracles instead of looking for the miracle worker, we might actually miss with what is important. I don't want that to be us. It's a new year. Hmm? I think we should seek not just after the things of God, but to seek God himself. Hmm? Yes, we want the healing. We will pray for the healing. But in order to receive the healing, let us first seek the healer. I like this reading and I like the message that it gives. A faith, even in the unseen, trusting that God is in the midst of it. I don't know what you've been praying for. And I'm sorry if you feel that you've not been getting the response that you desire. But I ask you, remember that the result that you desire might not be according to God's will. But not because what you desire is not according to God's will means that God does not have in store for you that which is best for you. 
Continue to trust that he who created you loves you. Continue to trust that he who created you knows exactly what you need before even you do. Continue to seek not just the provisions from God, but continue to seek the provider himself. Amen. Let us continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage A on page 43. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Our first collet for today is the collet for the first Sunday after the Epiphany. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made, and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. And now let us say a call it for those who live alone. Almighty God, whose son had nowhere to lay his head, grant that those who live alone may not be lonely in their solitude, but that following in his steps they might find fulfillment in loving you and their neighbor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Mr. Alburn Petio, Father Jeffrey Baker, Mrs. Betty Jean Tate, Mr. Dan Francois, Reverend Frederick Francisco, and Mr. Victor Rosado. Celebrating a birthday today is Mrs. Antoinette Webster, Miss Barbara Norales, and Baby Madison Levy. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday, and that indeed God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for your birthdays, but for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, and Miss Kim. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Beverly, Miss Janet, and Miss Marley. We pray for Miss Molly, Miss Venancia, Miss Amelia, Miss Crystal, Miss Marlene, Miss Alma, Miss Dylan, Miss Janice, Miss Myrna, and Miss Margaret. We pray for Miss Betty, Miss Martha, Miss Marva. Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, 
Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Altia, Miss Teresa, and Miss Amy. We remember and pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlet, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, Miss Salome, Miss Sonia, Miss Myrtle, Miss Geraldine, Miss Lorraine, Miss Delverine, Miss Elma, Miss Maud, Miss Alma, Miss Jean, and Miss Priscilla. In our prayers, we pray for Miss Verilyn, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alaire, Miss Nina, Miss Leonore, Miss Tanya, Miss Robin, Miss Patricia, and Miss Toya. We pray for Miss Nelita, Miss Joyce, Miss Marcia, Miss Ismay, Miss Joan, Miss Ulichi, Miss Lisa T, Miss Rita, Miss Louise, Miss Elena, Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kelia, Miss Velina, Reverend Tilona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Miss Nadia, Miss Eleanor, Miss Marie, Miss Felicia, Michelle Madin, Reverend Linda, Miss Dominic, Miss Tanisha, Miss Brenda G, Miss Bernadine, Miss Sandra, Miss Gretel, and Miss Carolyn. We pray for Miss Sheila, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, Miss Maisie, Miss Charlene, Miss Megan, Miss Tessa, Miss Dillis, Miss Julianne, Miss Shanice, Miss Kimberly, Miss Suzet, and Miss Irene. In our prayers, we pray for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, and Mr. Gary. We pray for Mr. Belhem, Mr. Ian, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Charles, Mr. Dion, Mr. Freddie, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Costa, Mr. Finley, and Mr. Dudley. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismael, Mr. Clement, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., and Mr. Carlos. We pray for Mr. Sean, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Mark, Mr. Lindon, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Dion, Mr. Pablo, Father Constancio, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Francis, Sir Colville, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, Mr. Brindell, and Mr. Ambrose. We remember and pray for Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Bishop Curry, Father Mark, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Chris, Mr. Trevor, Mr. Albert, Mr. Peter, Mr. Carmen, Mr. David, Mr. Richard, Mr. Orvin, Mr. Jervis, Bishop Wright, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Kieran, Mr. Marlon, Mr. Omar, Mr. Ted, Mr. Donald, and Mr. Paul. In our prayers, we continue to pray for healing for those who have recently contracted COVID-19, those in their various forms of isolation. We continue to pray for those who care for those in isolation, and we continue to give God thanks for the availability of a vaccine, even as we continue to pray for the containment and the elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection and for the enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray for all of our doctors, nurses, our pharmacists, our lab technicians, our radiologists, our cooks, our cleaners, our um, Adlis, those in administration, all who work in public and private institutions, remembering especially Drs. Hidalgo, Ariaga, Lawrence, Molina, Mongia, Arnold, Manzanero, Shogreen, Sosa, Ken, Young, Arana, Joseph, Eck, and Cuellar. We pray for Nurse McKin, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Orell, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Lino, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julie, Nurse Ashley, Nurse Cadogan. In our prayers, we continue to pray for those who have none to pray for them. Praying together, Heavenly Father, give of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care, and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray this morning for the family of Miss Earlene Bernard, the family of Bishop Lawrence Nicasio, the family of Miss Victoria Ogales, the family of Mr. Anthony Savory, the family of Mr. Victor Sambula, and the family of Miss Carmita Phillips. For all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray that God will grant you comfort during this time of bereavement, and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. 
We continue to remember and pray for our students, praying for Elisa, Tammy, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Randolph, Ashley, Ria, Kai, Arian, Tiffany, Jamal, Garrett, Angel, Page, and Freedom. We continue to remember and pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Jason, Charles S., Derek, Emil, Charles C., Prince, Candy, Sam, Gavin, Christopher, and Isham. In our prayers, we continue to pray for those who are considered most vulnerable in our society. We remember and pray for the poor, for the homeless, for the needy, for the elderly, those in home, those at home, and those in hospices. We continue to remember and pray for persons who are battling autoimmune illnesses, persons struggling with lupus, persons struggling with HIV and AIDS, persons battling with cancer of every stage and form, persons who at this moment are on life support in hospitals. We continue to remember and pray with those who are battling with mental health challenges, those who are battling with substance abuse issues. We continue to remember and pray for those who care for these individuals. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the various branches of our security forces, for our Coast Guard, for our Belize Defense Force, for our police force. We continue to pray for our government, praying for the Governor General, the Prime Minister, the leader of the opposition, all the ministers of government, all those that work in parliament. We pray for all of our ambassadors. We pray for our public servants, especially for those who traverse the roads for work. We continue to pray for our churches and our church leadership. We remember, especially at this time, our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters who are preparing to lay to rest their bishop. And we pray for them, for God's discernment and wisdom as they prepare for the process of selecting a new chief shepherd for their church. We continue to remember and pray for all of our churches and our church leadership. We remember and pray for the private sector, for all non-governmental organizations involved in any form of humanitarian aid. We continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community, those ravaged by the effects of war and civil unrest, those ravaged by natural disaster, for all of them at their various stages of recovery, praying for God's provision and protection for them at this time, even as we pray for protection for ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disaster and against the threat of violence and civil unrest. For the prayers of our hearts of that tongue, skin my confess, pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments. And honor your protection now and ever, we will be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My means of announce, my brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in the presence of Almighty God and in your presence as well. I just saw flash on my screen a message about the passing of one of Miss Claire Moody's grandson. We've been praying for one by the name of Francis. You would have called me, called his name. Um, I am not sure if it is Francis who has passed away or not, but I will try to get some more details um, about that this morning. But indeed, we pray for Miss Claire and her family um, on the passing of her grandson. Uh, of course, we continue to give God thanks for the safety of the weekend that is gone, and we pray for his continual guidance over us in the week ahead. You would have heard me pray, especially for our teachers and our students who are going back to school um, across the country today and of course in some sections of the U.S. as well. Some would have gone back already from last week but we pray that the remainder of the school year is a blessed one for both our teachers and our students. Mm -hmm. um, we continue to ask your prayers of course um, for our own bishop and clergy. You would have seen and heard the names of particular ones but please pray for your clergy. Yeah. Your clergy is coming straight out of Christmas and New Year's rush. 
into AGMs and yearly reports and, and elections. And then right after we come out of that, we go straight into the season of Lent beginning on Wednesday, the 14th of February, which will be Ash Wednesday. So please continue to pray for your um, clergy. Okay, I see a message there that it is France indeed. Mm, we pray for the repose of his soul and we pray for comfort and peace for his family and loved ones. Um, I would have been at the hospital when France was brought in from Placencia to Dangriga and then transferred um, transferred to Belize City a couple of weeks ago. So we continue to pray for his mom and his grandmother and all his uncles, cousins and other relatives um, for God's comfort to be upon them during this time of bereavement. Sad news indeed to start the morning with. Um, other news, please be reminded that our broadcast schedule for today, following this broadcast, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30, and compline at 9 p.m. to close the day. We pray that you will join us for any or all of these services as you are able. And of course, um, we know that if you miss them at the scheduled time, you can also catch a recap on any of the Facebook pages of the churches in the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We want to thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. I was supposed to ask, and I probably will message her later, but you would have heard me pray um, towards the ending of last week for our sister, Miss Jose, Josephine Flowers. Josie, I hope you are feeling much better now, my darling, and that you continue to work towards good health indeed. We're going to wrap up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off with this good epiphany one. And before the week is out, we'll, we'll hear We Three Kings. But we're going to close with this good epiphany one entitled, As With Gladness, Men of Old. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until then, God bless and bye for now.
Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful it's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another day Every day I open my eyes I see morning light, morning light I know that the Lord just brought me through the night Through the night So I face a challenging day Before he take me away behind to the grind Success on me Another beautiful day I had to get a 